Welcome everyone. For those who don't know, Digitally Lit Atlantic Canadian Youth Read is a youth engagement strategy aimed at bridging literary and digital spaces. Guided by publishers and youth ambassadors representing each of the Atlantic Canadian provinces, PEI, New Brunswick, Newfoundland and Labrador, and Nova Scotia, Digitally Lit is managed by a team of independent consultants and funded through the Canada Council for the Arts. We've created this pre-recorded video to publicly celebrate our youth ambassadors, and in particular, the first wave of their online engagement projects. That said, our youth ambassadors are currently live online, ready and able to answer any questions in the real time here and now. Worthy of note is that these online engagement projects are born of the pandemic in the shared interests of providing some structure and maybe even a little, little catharsis for other youth our Atlantic Canadian Youth Ambassadors have come up with some pretty darn nifty online projects. Our first project was the In This Together Photo and Book Quote Campaign, spearheaded by Newfoundland and Labrador Youth Ambassador Molly Powers, a grade eight French immersion student at Mount Pearl Intermediate. Molly is from Paradise, Newfoundland and Labrador. Next, we have the Fan Fiction 2020 Creative Writing Contest, spearheaded by Prince Edward Island's Youth Ambassador, Katie Shaw, a grade 11 French immersion student at Charlottetown Rural High. Katie's from Stratford, Prince Edward Island. And last, but certainly not least, we have the digitally lit character quiz. Which Atlantic Canadian protagonist are you? Spearheaded by Oliver Hallett, another Newfoundland and Labrador Youth Ambassador. Oliver is a 22-year-old media artist living in St. John's, Newfoundland. The quiz illustrations were conceived by Nova Scotia Youth Ambassador Jessica Muriel Parsons, a 23-year-old marketing assistant living in Halifax, Nova Scotia. All right, now that we've done that quick preamble, we can get going with our Youth Ambassador interview panel. They'll be answering some of the questions that were submitted in advance by educators, parents, young adults, and others. question comes from Charlotte Peake. Uh, Ms. Peake is a post-secondary ESL instructor and mom living in Nova Scotia. Her first question is directed to Katie, Katie Shaw. And this is regarding the fan fiction creative writing contest. She says, when everything feels so out of control, being able to write our own ending, even a fictional one, seems pretty empowering. What do you find reading and writing does for your own headspace? <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. I think right now we're all living in this time of uncertainty. Uh, I think there's a great amount of anxiety and it's really easy to get wrapped up in that. So I think being able to write even a fictitious uh, story and write your own ending, it can really bring back that control and that power. For me, it definitely does help and bring a lot of comfort. So I definitely enjoy reading and writing uh, to kind of think through my emotions and work through them as well. question is from Miss Peak and is for Molly. Um, I love the way your project explores the relationship between our inner and outer worlds during this time. In some ways, it feels like we're all inhabiting our inner worlds more than ever before, isolating with books or Netflix, and in some ways, it feels we're thrust into the outer world. We can't avoid the news, can't hide from the impact of the wider world or our own lives. So she asks, in entering our inner world by reading fiction books, are we necessarily accessing a way to navigate our current realities and how can you think of any examples from the books you're currently reading? I think, yes, of course you're unlocking like this, by escaping sort of, you're unlocking this key to reality. Um, even though fiction books aren't based on real people or the events didn't happen in that exact way, someone had to go through something. It, that book had to be based off a relationship or a conversation or an adventure that person go, went through and they built a world around it. Um, I recently read The Goodbye Girls by Lisa Harrington and in that book there are many situations that I related to the character or the events because I had went through it myself and it sort of gave me insight on how to go through different situations in the future. So not only do you get lost within a good novel, 
um, you learn more about yourself and the world just from one chapter of one book. Our next question comes from Dr. Connie Morrison, and it's for Oliver Hallett. Um, Dr. Morrison is a professor in the Faculty of Education at Memorial University in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Uh, first of all, Dr. Morrison says, I'd like to congratulate you, Oliver, on this engaging survey. I took it myself, and as it turns out, I'm most, I'm most like the queen of the crows, so now I can't wait to read the book and see how true that is. Her question for you, Oliver, is, what was the process you used to select the titles and how did you decide the range of characters you wanted to include and then figure out how to transform them into questions? Thank you for the question, Dr. Morrison. Um, I started by looking through the books from each of the publishers that are suitable or directly meant for a young adult audience and then narrowed it down based on how the main characters came across within the summaries. I actually read the majority of the books involved with this project while it was in its early stages, though I had read one of them before. So I ended up developing most of the questions as I was reading. And while reading, I was on the lookout for the big things when it comes to characters, such as their strengths and their flaws, but also considering stuff like, how would this character answer this question themselves? And what aspect of this character can I assign to a more metaphoric answer, such as the choose a time of day question? I wanted a bit of balance to the questions, with some being specific and with others being a bit more vague. Um, so some decisions were also made with how easy for me it would be to come up with both the questions and the answers to them in mind. Um, so characters that I found um, easier to get a read on than others. Uh, this next question is directed at Katie Shaw, again about her fan fiction creative writing contest. And it comes from Madison, a grade nine student living in Clayton Park, Nova Scotia. She says, I love your creative writing contest idea. How did you come up with it? Uh, originally, my idea was to host this myself as just a little project to put on my Instagram for me and my friends to enjoy. And it just so happened to coincide with um, our uh, youth engagement projects starting up. And I thought this would be a really great opportunity to create one. So that's kind of how it began. And then we've been workshopping it for about a month. And I'm very proud of the result. Um, another question for Katie, uh, which comes from Jennifer Westman. Um, she's the program manager and at a study in called Edunova from Halifax, Nova Scotia. First she comments, I noticed in your contest rules that any young person between 18 and 25 years of age inclusive can participate in your contest provided minors or those under 18 have parental consent and that he, she, or they have lived somewhere within Atlantic Canada over the last year. Does this mean that those without Canadian citizenship, such as international students, permanent residents, and refugees, can also take part if they so choose? Uh, yes, it does mean that. Uh, this was really important because we really want to hear as many diverse perspectives and voices as possible. So I'm very excited and quite happy that uh, we can extend uh, the contest to people without Canadian citizenship. Great. Thank you. This question is from Molly Powers now and back for In This Together photo unquote, uh, book quote. Um, campaign and it comes from Lauren a first-year university student who's living in Mount Uniac Nova Scotia she writes I love to read and I've been following digitally lit on Instagram anyway I just want to say my mom's a nurse and I showed her your post dedicated to essential workers when she got home the other day and she burst into tears so thank you for that I know it means a lot to her and other essential workers right now my question is do you think reading and writing are connected to social activism? And if so, how? I think that words are the most powerful and motivating ways humans can communicate change. So if one word is so powerful, think about the power that's held within a book or a novel. Um, books, I think that they spark conversation and opinions and different views from different people. Um, because of reading, People and beliefs are viewed in many different ways. 
Um, when you think about Pride and Prejudice, the book by Jane Austen, um, it has changed the views of women um, and opinions of women. Now, years later, because of one book, the lives of women are changed forever, for the better. Um, one book helped change the world. So who's to say that books don't and won't change the world every day? Um, our next question comes from Costas Halabrezos, a celebrated East Coast journalist living in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Costas Halabrezos is a former CBC Maritime Noon host and currently hosts Book Me podcast. And this question is directed at Jessica Parsons. So Mr. Halabrezos asks, have you ever drawn yourself as a character from a novel you've read? If you haven't, which character would you like to try, try on first? This is a very interesting question to think about uh, because I haven't ever drawn myself as any of the characters from any of the books I've read. Um, I tend to keep the characters uh, in my mind. Uh, I think everyone's got a different idea of the look of every character, which is what makes trying to put them on paper so difficult. Um, however, if I were to draw myself as a character, I think I would choose Diana Barry from Anna Green Gables. Uh, I think putting myself in a beautiful puffy sleeved dress sounds pretty nice and I might have to do that after this. Next question from Mr. Halabrezos is now for Oliver Hallett. Um, you've been involved in theater where you get to play characters who are quite different from yourself. But when you were younger, who were some of the literary characters you identified as having strong similarities with your personality or experience or perspective on life? Uh, this one took a bit of thought, to be honest, as I've undergone a lot of change over the course of my life already. So there are quite a few characters that I remember relating to when I was younger that I don't find as relatable today, and some characters that I find much more relatable in hindsight. But the two characters that really stick out in my mind as ones that I used to relate to and still relate to are Will from the Ranger's Apprentice series by John Flanagan and Matty from Hawksmaid by Catherine Lansky. Both of these characters end up finding themselves on a different path of life than what they thought or originally wanted, but they end up finding fulfillment on that path and the things that made them you know, outsiders, even within their own friend group, end up helping them find their own happiness and fulfillment in life. And it's something that I really resonates with me still to this day. They were also both uh, two protagonists who I understood uh, on a very personal level immediately. They were both characters where I would read something that they were doing and think to myself, yeah, that's what I would do in the situation, which wasn't a common occurrence for me reading growing up. Katie Shaw, this next question is for you, again about your fan fiction creative writing contest. It comes from Hannah, a 17 year old grade 11 student from Corner Brook, Newfoundland, Labrador. And she wants to know, are we allowed to take part if we don't have a copy of the book ourselves? Or do we have to read the book to take part? If so, how can we get the book? So you don't need to own a copy of the book to take part. We have excerpts available on our website, as well as a link to purchase the book if you would like. Uh, the books are also available um, in most local libraries, so I would check there as well as your online library. And uh, ebooks should also be available, so I would check that out as well. Thanks. Our next question is back to Molly Powers. Um, this question is coming to you all the way from Maple Ridge, BC. It's from Peggy Mitchell, a French immersion teacher and mom to two teens. She wants to know, how has your experience as a French immersion student impacted your interaction with English books? And further, do you think you could have the same connection with French literature? Um, she comments, just like you, my own two children are teenage French immersion students, and while both of them love reading for pleasure in English, they never do so for French. I've been studying French for a few years now, and when we read French novels in school, we usually have to dissect them and 
we focus more on the comprehension aspect. So I usually tend to focus on reading in English for pleasure more than I do in French. Um, I am able to create a better connection, I feel, in English only because I've been speaking English my entire life, but I do read French novels and it's easy to make connections there too. Um, I also feel that French novels aren't as easily accessible sometimes or advertised in the media, um, but at Digitally Lit in our next phase, we are working on working with French publishers um, to access French novels, so that should be exciting. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Molly, for mentioning that. We will be working with Bouton d'Or Acadie, um, based in New Brunswick, and our French immersion students will be taking that on in French and in English. So we're, we're pleased to have that opportunity. Our next question is for Jessica Parsons. This is a bit of a tough one for you. Uh, it comes from Colleen Russell, who's an upper elementary teacher from Conception Bay South. Her question is, Every year, my students create their own character quiz based on novels they read in classroom book clubs throughout the year. Do you know if there's a way to differentiate the quiz based on my students' individual needs? Um, so with quizzes, you can uh, engage with them online. I believe that's what Oliver did when creating, uh, he used both UQuiz and Interact. Uh, but there's many different ones out there on the internet that will fit to certain needs uh, based on how that they are framed. Um, also through Google Apps for Education, you could use Google um, Forms as a way to get uh, slower learners into character quizzes by creating a correction type quiz where there's only one correct answer. Um, and they can more delve into a character specifically and their actions and it might be a different way to approach the character quiz instead of having many characters you're focusing on the individuality of one. Um, so you could use different platforms for uh, online as well as uh, using one that's just very specific to one character through Google. Um, now back to your fan fiction creative writing contest, Katie. Um, we have a question from Ethan, a 14 year old student and budding creative writer from Kentville, Nova Scotia. Ethan asks, I've read both the Weird Duck series as well as the Dylan Maple Adventure series. Do I have to focus on the excerpts provided or can I choose an excerpt from another one of the author's books in the series? Uh, yes, we will have to be using the excerpts that were chosen. It just helps for our judges to um, evaluate everything equally, uh, but we still encourage you to apply with the excerpts that were chosen. Um, our next question is for Oliver Hallett, and it comes from a young adult fiction author named Hope Dalve, who recently published Welcome to Camp Fill in the Blank. Um, Hope lives in Prince Edward Island. Um, she writes, this is such a great idea. I love taking character quizzes. I took the quiz myself and apparently I'm like Violet from All the Things We Leave Behind by Real Nason. So now I wanna read the book to find out if I'm actually Violet. Her question is, have you tried the quiz yourself? Which character was selected uh, for you? And do you agree with that selection? Uh, I've done the quiz multiple times for the sake of testing out to make sure it worked properly. But for the times when I was taking it honestly and not just choosing answers at random, I mostly got Elsa from Queen of the Crows, uh, with one or two results being Violet from all the things we leave behind as well. And while I can certainly list some key differences between me and Elsa, I still think it's a pretty accurate result. Queen of the Crows was actually the first book that I read for Digital Lit, and the main reason for that was that I found Elsa interesting and I thought I might be able to relate to her. And Violet being a close second also makes sense in my mind, as I very much relate to the looking back and thinking of, maybe if I'd done this, things would be different now. Um, our next question is for Jessica Parsons, and this comes from Ellen Reed um, in St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. Ellen is a primary and early childhood educator with a very textured background in the arts and a wide variety of media, including poetry, visual arts, and comedy. And Ellen asks, as a former academic, I'm curious about your note-taking practices. 
How do you collect info? Do you use your phone? Or do you have a paper and favorite color pen or pencil? What color pen or pencil might you use? This is a great question. Um, I think all note-taking practices are um, great. And I tend to use paper and pen when taking notes for things that are kind of quick and unspecific that I don't necessarily need to go back to. Um, I'll use my laptop for meetings or things that I need to send out or be concrete. Um, and then I love taking notes on my phone. I think it's underutilized as a way to uh, pick up whatever happens during the day to take notes on um, something that might spark in your mind. It's a great method of creativity note taking. Um, that being said, I think if I had to pick one out of all of them, I'd always go for pen and paper. Um, our next question is for Katie. Um, another question for Katie in our fan fiction creative writing contest. Katie, this question um, comes to you from Jamie Rogers, a grade six elementary school teacher living in Mount Pearl, Newfoundland and Labrador. So Jamie asks or comments, I love your concept of challenging youth in Atlantic Canada to develop and reflect upon their creative writing skills. What ideas do you have for young writers who want to develop their creative writing skills while staying safe at home? Um, I think right now we have so much extra time on our hands, so I would definitely uh, advise to utilize that time. And as well as that, we also have access to a huge library of ideas on the internet, so I would definitely check that out for some inspiration. And uh, finally, I would suggest connecting with other people. I know whenever I write things, uh, I always turn to my support group. So to be able to at least connect virtually to them definitely makes a big difference. Great. Finally, the last question is coming from Gina Keeping. Gina is a life empowerment coach, junior high school teacher, former vice principal from St. John's, Newfoundland and Labrador, and it's for Molly. Um, she comments, as a life coach and teacher, I love your initiative, Molly, and I definitely want to help you spread the words and love that you're already sharing. Please keep shining, the world needs more people like you. My question is, who is your inspiration? Clearly you love reading and nature. Have you always loved these activities or has someone helped you to nurture these passions of yours? Um, I've always loved reading. I think that my teachers have definitely helped nurture it along the way though. But, um, you know, I've loved it since. I can't remember. Um, also, my nan has played a big role in my love for reading. She's a very avid reader herself. And when she used to pick me up from school, she'd tell me all about the books she was reading and I'd tell her about the books I was reading. And after I read my books from Digitally Lit, I'd give them to her and then we'd talk about them together. I can also remember she took me to the library to get my first public library card. Um, so I definitely think she's played a big influence on my love for reading as well. Um, if you haven't already, you can ask us some questions uh, here live on Facebook. We have our youth as hosts, so they are ready and prepared. I think they've already answered a few questions. I'm sure they would have because I, I know that there's gonna be people asking. Um, so thank you guys for your time right now and thanks for listening. Have a great day.